Welcome to our Energy Connect studio at Adipec 2022. I'm delighted to have sit next to me Simon Mekti, Regional Sales Director at EMEA at Sensia, and Sebastian Gru, Regional VP Meta Rockwell. Thank you both for coming down and spent to the Energy Connect studio. Pleasure. Simon, let me start off with you. Can you tell me more about Sensia and what it makes it stand out from the crowd? Well, Sensia was um, a joint venture created by two parent companies, one being Rockwell Automation and the other being Schlumberger, um, names you may be familiar with within the industry. Um, and they got together about three, over three, four years ago, and they, they kind of realized there was a bit of a gap in the market in order to create a company that can actually have operational edge capability from an oil and gas systems perspective, and then being able to bridge that OTIT divide into the petrotechnical world in order to bring value from edge to, to enterprise. And the nice thing there is this technology is available, but really only in silos from other companies. Uh, what we have done really is bring all those bits together in order to have a single company that can focus on that, that key point of operational straight through to petrotechnical. And we've got expertise on, on all those fields, which, which crosses all those barriers and brings it together in a, in a single company. Yeah, and that was the philosophy. Um, but we are still very much, we're 53% we're owned by Rockwell. Uh, 47 by Schlumberger, so they very much are, remain our parents. Yeah. Okay. Our, um, our wish when, when we created Sensia is really coming from a strong willingness of, of, of Rockwell to be closer of the application of our customers. So what's the best way uh, than to create a company dedicated for, for the oil and gas activities to bring the connected enterprise to life? Um, and Sensia is the, is the exact uh, conclusion uh, and, and result of that of that process, right? Uh, and we are very happy about the feedback we got from our customers. Uh, yeah. They see a very strong added value and value proposition that, it, that is delivered from Sensia, from A to Z, from the, from the, the I mean, you, you know better than myself all, all the terms, right? Yeah. But for the, the um, yeah. immense pump to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the wells and, the, and all the data you can get from that side, you will, I'm sure, talk about it uh, much more precisely. But the idea is to have some subject matter experts, highly dedicated, mm -hmm to one type of activity and application, which is oil and gas, and that's why we create Sensia. Yeah. Oh, well, really good here. And uh, maybe it's something you want to answer about, you know, how are you helping companies who are pushing the energy transition? Well, definitely is um, showing them what are, and helping them to understand through consultancies, through partnerships, through a very close approach, to understand what the KPIs uh, are the right one they need to improve very short term to have that transition to to manage this um, let's say not so clean energy at a point of time uh, some years ago to a much cleaner energy uh, taking care of the emission taking care of the leakage taking care of the efficiency of the process to have less flaring so to make it short is how we support them with our technologies our understanding of our SMEs to really define where they can improve and move smoothly uh, in, in their transition to new, to new energies. Yeah. And Maybe, yeah. Please. And yeah. I'll certainly follow that up. Um, you know, Seb, Seb said, it, said it all, um, but a couple of areas which I think we, we are investing in order to, to help with that whole green energy side of things is hydrogen. Um, hydrogen certainly is a, an area that we see huge growth in. Um, and some of our, um, our instrumentation for ultrasonic, for metering, for custody transfer, for rights, uh, for dosing and blending, uh, we've got a heavy focus on, on hydrogen to make sure we're hydrogen ready uh, that because it is becoming much more um, a, a, an important game in order to get carbon emissions down. And we're certainly seeing that in, in many, many markets across, um, across Europe and Middle East where they're starting to dose gas supplies with hydrogen and make a blend in order to bring that, um, that uh, uh, CO2 output down. Really interesting. And um, how important is digital transformation for the energy industry, Simon? What digital platforms do you offer? Oh, it's, it's, it's hugely important and it's, it's gathering such pace on a, a weekly basis. You know, I mean, people have had large amounts of data for a large amount of time. You talk about large data lakes and so on, but it's, it's really getting 
in context data. That's the important stuff. You know, we can all gather data, but it's getting, getting it, putting it to work. And if you can put it to work, you can get value from it. And this is where we see um, the being be able to bridge that operational knowledge with the petrotechnical and IT knowledge. And then you can have a you know point-to-point -point contact so that you're not consuming needless data um, and you're getting data which is in context, which is the important part to get value. And being able to understand that value stream from the edge right to the enterprise, that's where we see, we, you know, we, we have systems, we have solutions, we have software, we have hardware in order to bridge that within, as I said before, in a single company. Yeah. Yeah, and we have to crack. Uh, we have to crack an equation, right? That was brilliantly um, uh, announced by, by by Dr. Sultan. Max energy means minimum emissions, right? And and that's a real dilemma. How can we produce five billion more of, of barrel uh, uh, per, per per day, and at the same time uh, limit our emission on the market? So it's it, it's it going through adapt, adaptation adoption, sorry, of, of of strong technologies that are here on the market that are existing. It will go with a lot of uh, change management, culture management that the people have to take as well. Um, and that's along with the digital transformation journey that, that needs to, be, to, to, to happen. So um, we have quite a lot of technologies we can apply today that are part of the digital transformation journey. And it works very well uh, actually to have a data driven uh, decision with more precise data coming from the field that can help you to really understand what is there, where you are emitting, yeah. where you are not, uh, uh, let's say, um, productive enough or where you are not uh, good enough in terms of emission, uh, measure and act to ensure that you are emitting less. I mean, we just talked there about, you know, uh, you know, energy transition, but what also about, what is Rockwell doing around sustainability um, in the oil and gas sector? Well, I can, I can, I can yeah, start on, the, on that part. So, Every time you automized, every time you digitized, the, the goal is to ensure we are more efficient, the processes are more reliable, uh, the processes are consuming less energy, having less weight, having less water to be consumed. So finally, every time you drive a proper digital transformation journey and a proper automation journey, you have a direct positive impact on your carbon footprint. So all what we do in Rockwell and Sensia has a direct positive impact on the carbon footprint. Sometimes it's easy to calculate, sometimes it's not always easy to calculate, uh, but everything that we do is really on that, on that purpose. So um, how can we help to be more sustainable? Simple by doing what we are doing the best, supporting our customers to understand what are their KPIs on sustainability. And like I was saying before, measuring it, flagging where the, the issues are and improving the processes with the right data-driven process. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Seb again. The, 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 the ability to optimize and, and improve efficiencies, reduce emissions, you know, carbon capture, you know, in order to, to get those green savings are absolutely key. And, and they all start from, you know, from the process um, all the way through to getting clever AI type models to optimize every part of that process and the connectivity is, is, is key to bring that to bring that to reality. Yeah. Yeah. We can give some, some example if, yeah. you, if, you, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, some coming to my mind is the, is the PEMS, it's a predictive emission monitoring system. Mm. It's a software that can modelize uh, the emission of, uh, of a site, right, of a factory or, or whatever. So instead of doing that with plenty of analyzers that are very costly, physical, difficult to maintain, difficult to access sometimes, we are creating a digital twin of what the analyzers are showing. And this digital twin is able to evolve with some inputs like production, temperature, pressure. Today, the PEMS that is more and more uh, um, pushed on the market and adopted by, by, by people like, like Adnoc with, with, uh, with some strong PEMS uh, um, deals coming in the, in, the, in the future, which is very good. Uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this PEMS is today an open loop. So today is only for validation, certification, and um, a sharing of the results uh, by law. We can think that in the next years, this PEMS is becoming a closed loop where actually when we know the emissions and where they are, we can close the loop and act on the production temperature, pressure, whatever, to decrease, increase 
mix, blend, whatever is, 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 is necessary to ensure that we have less emissions. What, really interesting. Um, uh, now, obviously, as you said, you're a merger between Stringers there and Rockwell. How important, in your view, is you know, collaboration and the strength of Rockwell's partner network? Well, <laughs> we, from a partner network point of view, Essentia is um, we're quite young in our partner network and it's growing dramatically because we see huge value to give that reach, to give that confidence and give the support to our customer base. But the real experts here, we're kind of following their lead, to be quite honest, is Rockwell. Uh, we've learned a lot from Rockwell, from our, from our parent, and, and we're trying to evolve that same kind of capability within, within Sensia to, to really add, add the value to the customer locally. But the same, I've got to say Rockwell have got that yeah, very well organized. Rockwell, Rockwell is mainly working through partners, right? That, so, so, so we are very, we're very well known on the market to go through our system contractors, our contractors, the APCs that are there. Um, and I'm glad, and, and Simon knows it very well, about the evolution of Sensia, going, going from, uh, from a company that is really uh, coming from the solution part, end user directly, uh, directly dealing with, uh, with the end user from Rockwell, evolving to a, a full-fledged, complete company with a go-to-market strategy and a partner approach that is giving a lot of added value on the market today, where Sensia cannot reach by themselves um, uh, on Africa, on some other places here. Um, it's, it's very, it, it means a lot uh, to work with the partner that are close to the customers and value their added value. Oh, well, really good to hear, Sebastian. And finally, just before we go, <clears throat> do you want to both sort of give me your thoughts on what technologies do you have at Sensia you know, that can help with decarbonization? That's a, that's a really good question. A couple of things um, spring to mind. We, we do have a um, carbon capture type system. A couple of elements to that is the, the ability to, to measure and monitor what you're putting into the, into the reservoir, um, for one. But then it's, it's also controlling the reservoir because a reservoir, they can leak. So if you're going to carbon capture, you then need to have systems and data management systems in order to ensure the integrity of the well. And this is one aspect that we bring. We, we monitor the well, we monitor the, the different aspects of the well and the reservoir. Uh, we're then able to, to, to do all the allocation um, of all the, 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 you know, what's inside that's going on historically and you know, we predict into the future. So that, again, that petrotechnical knowledge has landed really, really well for actually doing carbon capture and the ability to, one, to inject, control the injection, uh, as well as the monitoring of the management of the reservoir over a, a very long period of time. So that's one element. The other element is a slightly different one with regards to emission monitoring, but like what Sems was, Seb was saying, um, part of the emission monitoring, we're working with a, a large European um, customer of ours uh, in order to be able to provide the emission reporting demanded by legislation. And we, we are now automatically able to understand the amount of gas that's being consumed, the amount of gas that's being burnt, how much CO2, how much methane. So all that knowledge is actually being monitored in a real time, but then that real time can become into a reporting mechanism in order to show um, the, the emission capability and report that to government as well. So there's two areas that we're helping with regards to decarbonisation. Really good to hear, Simon, thanks. Um, well, thanks both of you for coming down to the Energy Connect studio. It's been a really good conversation. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Invite. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.